Hi, I'm James Button, Communications Manager of the Grattan Institute. I'm talking to Jim Minifee, Program Director in the Productivity Growth Program. Jim, you've just written a report, the $10 billion super sting. What is the $10 billion super sting and what should be done about it? Australians pay far more for our superannuation than comparable systems overseas charge their account holders. It's big enough to really wear on people's retirement incomes. And not only that, but there are opportunities to make a significant difference to how the system works that will, will result in genuine savings. Okay, so how much money are we talking about here? So the average person would be paying about 1.2% every year of their superannuation balances. Doesn't sound like much, but over time that adds up to over 15% of a drag on their retirement balances by the time they've gone through an entire working life. So it's big enough to really make the difference between steak and spaghetti uh, at retirement. And as a country, how much do you think we're paying too so much? The yeah, the total fees that we're paying now exceed $20 billion every year. And comparable systems overseas that still retain a lot of choice and discretion on the part of the account holders can deliver similar value for about five or six billion dollars. So we're really, we're, we're talking over 10 billion dollars of excess fees. That could be saved. That's right. Right. So we're three times or more the uh, comparable systems overseas yes. on average. Yes. And where is that money going? So there's a large funds management industry that undertakes a whole set of different activities. And some of those obviously are value creating. There are accounts that are generated for individual account holders funds are invested and so forth, but all the way through the chain, excess cost has not been wrung out of the system, and there are additional activities that destroy value that don't do any good, such as heavy advertising, um, sales and distribution networks, active management that doesn't pay its own way in terms of generating high net returns, and all of those things add up to a big drag on people's returns. It's about a third to a quarter of gross returns over the last decade in superannuation have gone in fees. And we talked about the impact on individual account holders. Is mm. there a broader impact to the society, to government spending of this kind of... Uh, so there are two important fees? dimensions. The first is that all of those activities that are not generating value in this sector could be freed up and those individuals and the capital stocks, the IT and so forth could be redeployed to more valuable uses outside of the superannuation sector. That's number one. And then number two, is the, the flow-on effects of insufficient retirement savings. And what that means is that people get to retirement with less um, superannuation than they otherwise would. They go onto the pension earlier than they otherwise would, and that's a bigger tax burden for, for the people who remain in the workforce. Okay, your report doesn't just expose this problem, it offers solutions for what should be done. That's Tell right. us what those solutions are. So we looked around the world at a range of different systems to understand what appeared to be associated with generating lower costs of running private uh, investment systems of this type. And there's a range of practices that are undertaken overseas that seem to be associated with really good outcomes. So the first is that um, even retaining full private provision of, of the pension system, um, some countries run essentially a tender system or an auction system whereby the large funds bid for the right to be the provider of services, particularly for people who don't choose their own accounts, the so-called default accounts. And what's been seen in those systems is that fees rapidly fall to around a third of the level that was prevailing prior to the introduction of this tender system. And we think it would be possible to bolt on, as it were, um, a tender of that type in the Australian system and fairly quickly begin to wind down the costs for the about one third of our total superannuation system, which is as I said, defaults for people who aren't making active choices of funds themselves. So that's a first big opportunity. So it's not enough just to have reforms that uh, show people that they're paying too much for fees and give them opportunities to compare what they're paying against other funds. Mm. That's good, but it's clearly alone not going to do a lot. What you're proposing is quite a bold intervention in the superannuation well, I think you could, put it, you could put it that way. And so first, on the disclosure and comparability, what you've said is quite true. It's really an essential first step to superannuation reform to have that greater comparability. And the stronger super reforms that were introduced by the previous government do go some way in, in, in that direction. 
But it's been shown overseas that even significant changes in comparability lead to very little difference in behaviour and very little difference in fees. And so something with a real, um, uh, the way I think about it is a, a, a real use of wholesale competition as opposed to relying on price pressure from people who are not well informed does seem to make a, a, a much bigger difference to fees and we, we think the government should be seriously considering unleashing the force of that wholesale competition. So Jim, how are the funds themselves going to react to your report and to the reform agenda you're proposing? I think there's going to be a range of responses. Funds that are currently charging high fees, particularly for default accounts, are probably not going to welcome our, our suggestions. But there are going to be other funds that see these reforms as potentially a very large opportunity if they've got very efficient systems and can offer a quality exposure to the right assets at a low cost, then they'll jump at the opportunity to rapidly build scale. So we're expecting a differentiated response from the industry. Jim Menefee, thank you very much. Thank you.